Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I've got a full tank review for you of a brand new tier 9 premium medium tank. Just one month after we had the first tier 9 premium medium tank go into the game, this is the T-54D. It is German, although it definitely has Soviet influence, right? And it's basically like a T-54 where they've put space protection over literally almost every aspect of the vehicle, making this one of the heaviest medium tanks in the game and it truly blurs the line between medium and heavy. However, a lot of, I'm sure a lot of you are waiting with bated breath, how much of its medium tank nature does it have to sacrifice to get such a whopping amount of protection? Well, that's what Uncle Scrubby Baby is here to do today to tell you. So I'm going to be comparing the T-54D to the Object 590 and the Kampfpanzer. The Object 590 because it is a tier 9 Soviet premium medium tank and the Kampfpanzer 50T because that is possibly the creme de la creme of German reward vehicles. Now let me clarify the T-54D is premium and so it will be making extra credits while the Kampfpanzer will not but the 590 is premium as well. So immediately we notice the damage per minute of this vehicle is significantly lower than the other two tanks by roughly about 5 to 10 percent but the alpha damage I would argue more than makes up for this. This has 390 alpha compared to the 320 that the other two vehicles have. However keep in mind that the object 590 does have a three round auto loader so it will be able to do 960 damage in eight seconds of the first shot. However, the T-54D, as soon as you get a gun rammer and vents on this vehicle, that's going to be doing about 780 in roughly about the same time. So this vehicle's firepower is not all that bad, especially when you take a look at that it gets APCR rounds as standard with 268mm of pen, far better than the 590, although the premium rounds on this vehicle at 300 are a touch worse than the Kampfpanzer 50T and massively worse than something like a T-54, which gets 330mm of heat pen and significantly more damage per minute than this vehicle. Moving on now to the gun handling of this vehicle. 2.7 seconds aim time is not great, although it's a little bit better than the 590, but massively worse than the Kampfpanzer. 0.33 accuracy is not bad. This thing can snipe fairly well. And that's a much needed boon to this tank because it has pretty bad gun handling. Although let me clarify, this is going to be buffed in a micro patch as of this video being released, going from 0.25 to 0.22 when moving and 0.16 to 0.14 when turning the turret. And so all of the gun handling that you see in the video today, it's just going to be roughly about 10% better. However, even this buff still means that it's worse than a Kampfpanzer 50T, significantly worse, although it will be marginally better than the Object 590. However, this is where the good news ends. The T-54D has bad gun depression at 5 degrees, much worse than the 8 degrees that you're going to have on the Kampfpanzer, and even worse than the 6 degrees that we recently had on the Object 590. So I've told you this blurs the line between heavy and medium. So what's the story with the mobility of this vehicle? Well, 40 forwards and 15 backwards is tragic for a medium tank. This is going to be one of the slowest high tier medium tanks in the game. Reminds me of the unbuffed M48 pattern or even the FE4202 when that used to be at tier 10. And it has a horrible engine power of 580 considering it weighs 45 tons, giving it a poor power to weight ratio. However, luckily, Wargaming have rebalanced this by massively improving the terrain resistances of this vehicle so it does kind of behave a bit more like a medium tank and gets up to its top speed along medium and soft and is actually even faster than the other two vehicles in this comparison on soft. And so that means that the T-54D is not really engine power limited. It is more top speed limited and so if you can do everything that you can to be able to improve that it can help the vehicle negate this disadvantage that it has and it's really important to recognize this because otherwise if you didn't know about these hidden statistics that aren't shown inside the garage you might think this thing was truly more of the super slow medium but it's actually relatively okay add to this however poor turret traverse of 30 degrees which does feel awkward and bad hull traverse of 35 degrees but then again this vehicle it's only just a touch slower than the Kampfpanzer 50T again because of those massively enhanced terrain resistances. So now let's look at the armor of this vehicle it says 100 on the front and 80 on the side 240 on the front of the turret and 180 on the side of the turret so that makes this thing look just look so much worse than the Kampfpanzer however what that is not taking into account is that this vehicle gets 55 millimeters of space protection over the upper hull, 40 over the side, and it has 16 millimeters of space protection all along the side armor here. On the turret front as well, 55 over some of the armor, which means that it's very, very hard to be able to go through this. And while it doesn't cover the cupolas on top of the tank, which are quite poor, that means that this vehicle is just as good, if not more brutal, than the Kampfpanzer with regards to its armor. However, 
I'd like to clarify that there are gaps in this space protection. If you're looking straight at the vehicle and aiming down, you can aim to the left or to the right of the hull where these indents are. I guess it looks like there's maybe some hooks to be able to attach, I guess, if you're wanting to tow the vehicle or tow something else, but these create significant weak points on the vehicle. So aim for these if you're engaging the tank and you won't need like 240 millimeters to go through the upper hull. You'll only need 65 to be able to go through the upper hull. Although they will be quite hard to see and hit, especially if the vehicle's angling, then this becomes very awkward to deal with. However, one of the biggest issues of the vehicle is that the space protection doesn't extend fully over the side of the hull, as we can see here. And so while it's quite hard to see, you can actually shoot all the way along here. The tracks, uh, this kind of like a uh, track guard over the top here, it does a little bit to stop you from seeing it clearly but you can just shoot to the left of this and you only need 200 millimeters to go through also while the space protection is good on the side this whole area around the track is very weak of this vehicle over angles and so be careful with that so make sure with this tank that you are angling only like this and never like this otherwise it's going to be easy to pen however also you might notice that along the lower part over half of the track that it's angled in like this. And so it means that if you do over angle this vehicle and somebody does shoot at your tracks, 50% of the time it's not actually going to enter the vehicle, which is very nice. All in all, this tank is amazing against tier seven in tier eight vehicles, especially considering that the lower plate on this vehicle has 230 millimeters of armor. That means that all tier sevens and tier eights that aren't loading gold just really won't be able to go through you reliably unless they are bypassing this space protection or shooting the weak points on top of the vehicle. But most people, when they see a medium, they're just trying to shoot the hull. You need to think of this thing more as like a super pershing at tier 9 with that regard which is why the vehicle definitely needs to be taken seriously however unfortunately the vehicle only has a thousand six hundred hit points and so it's dubious as to whether you should improve this with a durability device as it's not really getting that much of a bonus compared to the other two vehicles or you could look at it as an aspect to improve on the tank to be able to make it match up the bulk that you have on the 590 and the Kampfpanzer. Accordingly, that means that the T-54, while it is very resilient, it ends up being quite fragile. And every time you get penned, it's more annoying than the other vehicles because of that lack of hit points. Add to this a very low Amarak health, and then that means you definitely want to have safe stowage on this vehicle. However, this is what's crazy about this tank and what's crazy about a vehicle like the Kampfpanzer 50T as well, that it gets really good camo when it's moving compared to heavies. So you can be very sneaky getting into position, but still have the armor when you've got there to, to last in that hopefully that whole down position. Although when we think about it, this vehicle doesn't really need that much of a hold down position because that armor is just so thick on the front. However, one of the downsides of this vehicle is the 509, uh, sorry, 380 meters view range, which will never really allow you to get up to a really decent top spotting range unless you invest into coated optics in this tank. Okay, with all that said and done, let's take a look at the crew of this vehicle. So annoyingly, this vehicle doesn't have a crew that works with either of the two top tier German medium tanks. Your Leopard will be annoyed because the loader is the radio operator on this vehicle and not the commander. Accordingly, I hope that you have trained up a radio operator loader on your T-55A or alternatively on your Rampanzer. If you haven't, then you're probably going to have to have a dedicated loader on this vehicle with brothers in arms as a zero skill otherwise it's going to be quite a high pressure role on this vehicle however if you're playing this for the first time and for some reason you haven't got any german medium tanks don't invest in six cents on your commander crew skills you want is brothers in arms recon repairs concealment and all of the other ones are just extras on your gun you want to have brothers in arms repairs concealment and then have things like snapshot dead eye and designated target on your driver i would definitely recommend brothers in arms repairs concealment then probably take off-road driving and then take things like smooth ride to be able to improve that horrible gun handling that the vehicle has and on your loader this is the high pressure situation definitely recommend zero skill on this so you can get ahead of the other crew members i'll get brothers in arms repairs concealment situational awareness then you want things like safe stowage intuition maybe so you can switch out to the heat rounds that the vehicle has adrenaline rush firefighting yeah the list goes on that's why this is quite an annoying tank if you haven't played the game for a long time and you don't have a t55a for example now let's talk about equipment 
this, this one's a real enigma. It has such bad gun handling, I'd really like to use vertical stabilizers on the vehicle. However, it's so darn slow that I'd really like to use a turbo on the vehicle as well. And it does have okay firepower, so I want to use a gun rammer, and I want to use vents as well, because otherwise this vehicle has horrendous view range unless you get the extra 10 meters that you can get from vents. So what you choose will be probably down to your playstyle. For me, I'm going to have two builds on this vehicle. One is going to be turbo vents gun rammer for those larger maps where I need to make push plays to get into position. And the other build that I'm going to be using is going to be using a durability device so that I can keep my tracks going. And if I get ammo racked, that it's not the biggest of deals, as I'll hopefully still have my repair kit for my ammo rack and I won't have wasted it on my tracks. This build also allows you to have a ridiculous suspension repair time of 3.21, which means that you're going to be constantly able to side scrape, put the pressure up, keep your tracks wiggling and try and bait your opponents into bouncing off what is quite a tricky vehicle to reliably penetrate. Next up, let's talk about the field mods on this tank. Firstly, I would recommend the module durability increase, although if you find that the traverse speed on the vehicle is too horrendous for you, then you could go the other way. But be warned, that will make this vehicle awful if your engine and your ammo rack go. Next, I'd recommend the accuracy improvement to this vehicle, then I'd follow it up. For me personally, I'm going to take the reverse speed on this tank and the suspension repair speed. However, if you find that it's annoying and you want to play more of a, a scouty medium tank, then you probably want to go for concealment. But my whole ideology of this vehicle is not to go and play in your traditional medium tank locations, but to go and turn this thing into a heavy tank and it can fight with heavies quite effectively and try and win that flank and that engagement instead. For the optional category slot, I've taken survivability, but if you want to improve the view range of the vehicle to have another flexible build on this tank, maybe go for scouting. And for the final field mod, I've personally improved the top speed limit of this vehicle by 2 kilometers an hour. However, I'd like to warn you, if you do this, you will have terrible view range on this vehicle. And so you might even want to go the other way if you absolutely hate the idea of not having good view range and playing this as a more traditional medium. However, for me, this is something I'm willing to sacrifice because I don't want to go down to a 38 kilometer an hour top speed limit in medium. I want to have 42 without the turbo to allow me to get into position and I'm not really worried about extending my view range when I'm there. Anyway, I think that's quite enough jibber jabber. Let's get stuck into the gameplay. Okay, so first up I'm going to be rolling out on Abby and this is in a very nice matchup for the vehicle when you go against your tier 7 and tier 8 tanks. And this vehicle is oh so different when you get to play against tier 7s and tier 8s. Trust me on this, this thing, when you're playing against those 7s and those 8s, truly feels like a, a super heavy kind of medium. Bizarre in a way, right? I'm going to be adding a turbocharger to this build because Abbey's the kind of map where you have to be able to get around quickly to be able to flank your opponents. And I, I don't really feel that there's going to be too much side scraping here. Probably a little bit more of kind of like hide the lower plate and try and work the corners where, you know, I'd benefit from a durability device. And luckily, the vents still get the uh, durability slot bonus, which is going to help me out by a little bit, right? So this tank, as you can see, upslope, we're going at like 37 with the turbo. It's not super fast, but it's not slow. This is truly not a slow medium tank, despite what you would think from uh, the engine power on this vehicle. A lot of people will be looking and thinking, oh my word, this thing has a power to weight ratio of like 12, 12.89. Uh, wow, it's going to be like the slowest thing ever. But, oh uh, well, Wargaming can just make it look slow, but then adjust its ground resistances. It's always bizarre to me when they do that, as, to, as opposed to having just one value. But I guess Wargaming want to make certain tanks really bad on soft terrain or medium terrain. I guess it's understandable if they have two values to be able to balance that out. I digress, let's focus on what's at hand, and that is a 1375 being sent back to the garage and me just sitting in front of a Borask firing gold. I can't really think of another tier 10 medium tank, apart from maybe something like a 121B, that can just sit there with so much immunity against a gold firing Borask. However, unfortunately, the Cobra firing into the butt of my vehicle forces me to lurch forwards and I take a shot from the 257. However, this thing slaps, it really does. 390 alpha damage is brutal. Nobody wants to take that. And the funny thing is, is that I've kind of, I'm able to fire twice for every time this 257 is. We've got the same damage per minute, but I've got the better, well, the better reload because of my alpha. And I'm pretty accurate as well. I consistently get my shots in. We managed to see that I'm ricocheting shells there off the upper hull as he's trying to go through my side. 
Uh, but he's not able to. And then hopefully we can manage to finish them off. But ah, a bit of a low roll there for 348 up to 446. High roll. And I, I don't think that I really needed to use the repair kit there. I think I should have just waited for the natural repair. Uh, but boy, look at that aim time. That 2.7 seconds aim time is horrendous. If I was playing a Kampf Panzer, I would be hitting these shells so much easier. But the Kampf Panzer would be getting penned in the lower plate. But uh, <laughs> just when you think you've aimed enough, aim a little bit more, right? Uh, I really didn't think I was rushing the shot there on the Carnarvon, but boy was I. So that means that we leave the Carnarvon on three hit points. How much am I going to aim this one? Okay, I'll just get really close, so that prevents all of the RNG. Now let me clarify once again, if you've skipped to the gameplay, the Wargaming are improving the, the uh, bloom from moving and from turning the turret by roughly about 10% in a micro patch. So the version of the tank that you see me playing here will have about 10% worse gun handling than the one that you will play if you get one of these vehicles from the loot crates. And I just feel this is just crazy. We've blocked 2,600 damage. I feel like I'm more of like a tier 9 or tier 10 heavy here, trundling forwards. But, ooh, this is where it gets ugly, right? I've got terrible hit points on this vehicle. And so that means the Yag Tiger takes off a tremendous amount of my HP because I'm not using a durability device I'm in an awkward situation. And that Yag Tiger actually nearly managed to turn in time to give me a bit of a headache. And while they do, they're not using a durability device, which I think is a mistake on a Yag Tiger, they are now absolutely crippled. They've lost their ammo rack, they've lost their engine, and soon they're going to be losing their tank as well. And this is what's great about this vehicle, is that a heavy tank might have not been quick enough to get around the side of the Yag Tiger, but this vehicle was fast enough to get around the side of the Yag Tiger. It really does blur the line between a heavy and a medium, I'd liken it to something like a 5A or a 113 within that regard. But for its tier, I think it has probably better armor than the 113 and the 5A. And this is just where the matchup matters, really. The matchup matters, the tier matters, the size matters. And this CS44 is just unable to deal with us with their standard rounds. Now they're going to fire gold rounds. We've got 55 millimeters of space protection on the front of the vehicle. And now we can also throw our weight around as a 45-ton tank with space protection on the front to take zero damage while we ram the CS44 to death, picking up our fifth kill of the game and smashing out 5,300 combined in a sub-five-minute round. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is the T... 54D. This is a brutal vehicle in a matchup like this. You can be aggressive, you can get in the faces of your opponents, and then you have more than enough penetration to be able to deal with them. You have the penetration of a Centurion 7-1, for example, or a Leopard prototype around that kind of area. But unlike those tanks, which have terrible hulls, this one does not. And while it does have issues, if it angles like this, easy pen here. If it's just angling even like this in its perfect form, it still has issues here behind the flap. You can just shoot down on the hull. And it has issues, obviously, with your being able to shoot down onto where it's bypass the space protection. Only have to get through 100 on the hooks or the weak points on top. But if you manage to keep this thing moving and don't allow those weak points to become a vulnerability like you do with the Super Pershing, this thing feels great. However, I want to clarify it is not all hunky-dory for the T-54D. Well, you saw me previously throwing my weight around against Tier 7s. Now we're going to take a look at a more innocuous kind of matchup against Tier 9s and Tier 8s. And we're going to see how well this vehicle performs. So on this map, you'll see that I am using the durability device because I don't really feel like I need the turbo. This map is won and lost in the town. This vehicle is going to mean that we have one extra heavy tank compared to the enemy team. And that is a, a great asset to have. So we're going to get four Centurions decided to play as if he's a heavy medium tank as well. Although they're really not. Our shells are easily able to go through their vehicle and theirs are not easily able to go through ours. Unfortunately, however, we can see that the poor gun handling this vehicle has, especially poor if you elect to not use vertical stabilizers like a scrub lord like me, you're going to be in a bit of a sticky wicket. So the Skoda T-50 falls back. We managed to put one into the lower plate of the VZ-51, and I'm hoping that Skoda just gets out the way and doesn't try to take the inside side scraping corner against me. We're going to put one into the side of the Samoa SM, and so far, so good, right? 1,177 damage, 530 damage block. This is looking really good for this tank. We're going to try and put a side shot in there against the TNH VZ-51, and I thought I was farming. I thought I was farming, and I am farming. This was the first ever game I played in this vehicle, and I was thinking, oh boy, boy, boy. But oh, here we go. Spaced armor failed. They've hit us right on the beak there. 
We've also lost our fuel tanks. We've had to invest our repair kit in. I'm hoping we can get the TNH here and we do manage to finish them off. But again, my fuel tanks go right through the front. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let me warn you with this vehicle, if you don't use a fire extinguisher, just be very careful. And this was the... Uh, the space protection failing as you can just manage to go straight through it there and you can see this bar more clearly now about what you can shoot along the side of the vehicle and it is really annoying that there is this big notch out of the space protection over the front as i did get hit in here many 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 times and suddenly like i just don't feel like i'm a tier 9 heavy you know i know this is a medium but it doesn't feel like i'm a tier 9 heavy but i gotta get forwards right that st1 has a stock gun so i'm gonna go forwards I'm gonna put some pressure on the summer sm don't want to get caught by the st1 however and i'm just hoping that my friends are gonna help me out the st1 fails to go through me i somehow managed to hit the dead tank in front of me again and suddenly i feel that i don't really have the dpm of a medium tank i'm feeling a little bit awkward now we put one through the st1 the st1's aiming for me does manage to pen me even with that baby stock gun the samoa sm puts a gold round through my lower plate manages to ricochet one there and it looks like the samoa goes for my weak point on top and you can see that this vehicle it's decent right we've blocked 1600 we've done 3000 damage in the first two and a half minutes of this game but if you think that you can just sit in front of everything and play like a true super heavy vehicle no you're really not going to be able to do that it does have weak points and even people on the enemy team who have not learnt this vehicle will randomly either find those weak points or be able to enter the tank and i can tell you as a matter of fact uh, from <laughs> when people do know this vehicle when they do watch my youtube video when they do see how the armor loadout works they know how to be able to counter this vehicle its weak points are going to become a lot more prominent and as long as your opponents load gold against this vehicle suddenly the armor doesn't really feel like it's so good and so this tank is just such a an inconsistency if you're playing against tier 7s or against tier 8s that don't load gold, boy, you are absolutely slamming it as long as they don't hit your weak points on top and you can manage to grind them out. And the awkward, horrible aim time and the awful gun handling on this vehicle doesn't hold you back. But as soon as they do load gold, and it just feels pretty lackluster. All right, round three. And what can possibly be more German than playing the first tier 9 German premium medium tank on the Berlin map? I've elected to use a durability device here, as I, I feel like, once again, it's a map that is won and lost in the south. The only time that I'm going to be taking a turbo on this tank is if I need to rush into a position, such as mines, for example, although I think this is a horrible tank to take on to the hill on mines, or alternatively on Abbey. Those kind of maps where you will have to flank, and you usually the, the route that you take is not so obvious and it can change and you need to be able to react by having the extra speed on the tank but again this tank if you take the field mod and you give it a top speed limit of 42 it's not particularly slow not particularly slow at all so unfortunately it looks like uh they managed to go right through the front of our spaced armor there with heat or maybe they managed to bypass the spaced armor and just actually go through the turret front a little bit awkward there but luckily for us the 0.33 accuracy that this vehicle has when it's fully aimed and it boy it takes a long time to be able to aim it so you really have to kind of like um cotton it on on a ridge line here you have to be you have to is that the word i'm using cottle i don't know you like cottle a baby i feel like i'm having to just be very very gentle with the way that, that i move the tank to make sure that the reticle doesn't fully bloom out now once again if you absolutely hate the bloom on this vehicle then you could take vertical stabilizers and vert stabs on this tank will be a good option because if you do take vert stabs you won't have to sit so still and if you don't sit still then you won't make those weak points that you have on this vehicle a lot more vulnerable to your opponents what you decide to use is going to be down to you and you know what maybe a, a vent gun rammer and vert stabs build could be very good on this vehicle but then again the durability on this tank it, it really does allow you to save that repair kit as i said for when you want to repair your fuel tanks or you want to repair your ammo rack and you don't want to get caught out and held down even with this vehicle's good repair time so unfortunately our uh, intuition reload not quite quick enough to be able to react to get the side of the 140 and we get a good old ricochet against the tier 10 medium here. So we're just doing well, man. 600 spotting or assistance with the tracking on the Kunzerpanzer and 2000 damage into the glass cannon medium tanks. And this is where I want to play this vehicle. There's two ways of playing this, right? One is that you go and fight the heavies on the enemy team. And boy, you can usually trade with them. Your gun's good and your armor's good. 
The other way is to go and use your fantastic armor against mediums on the enemy team, which is what I would definitely do in some of the nicer matchups that this vehicle has, because you're able to ricochet them. If they're not firing gold, you're easily able to deal with them there. Now we can just get forward, try and harass this 140. I'm loading heat so I can't go through the tracks as well. So I have to go for the lower plate there. I guess I could have intuition switched, but boy, losing that two seconds reload to be able to intuition switch didn't feel right. And I think it was probably the correct option because the 140 wanted to come after me. Talk about coming after me, that artillery manages to hit us very hard, although it was a damaging shell from a tier nine self-propelled gun. So not even the spaced armor that this vehicle has was able to protect me there. Yeah, I have to admit, this gun handling is definitely something that holds it back. It doesn't really feel like a medium tank within that regard. It definitely feels like more of a heavy tank. So this, this vehicle, I guess I've got to try and come to a conclusion about it. Is it a medium or is it a heavy? Well, it definitely blurs the line. I'd say it feels like it's more... I feel, I feel like it's more heavy tank than medium. I'd say it feels similar to something like a WZ-111, 1-4. Although it does have more of the medium tank kind of shell velocity, the accuracy, but definitely has medium tank camo. And that is one of the crazy things about this vehicle. It has a lot of the strengths of a heavy tank, but it has the camo rating of a medium tank. And because it's able to use that, I'm not going to show you in this replay today. In theory, some of you out there might want to still take like a full spotting build as one of your two options on this tank. You could, for example, change out the durability that I have here to instead use an exhaust and a vision system. And if you were to do that on this vehicle, this could be quite an aggressive forward vision vehicle that kind of gets into position, manages to spot out, but still has the durability to be able to exist there. There's so many different ways that you could play this tank. It is really not obvious. And what other kinds of mediums can just sit out in front of a TVP? Although, um, yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like sitting in front of the TVP didn't exactly fully last there. Uh, as we managed to block two shells, and then we get penned with the subsequent two. And we're actually lucky that he low rolled, but luckily for us, that procs our adrenaline rush. And it looks like it was the correct decision to use the durability here. Otherwise, I would have definitely been dead in this battle and not able to continue on. So the, the T-54D, do I think that it is the, the new best tier 9 premium in the game? Uh, I think it's going to do very well. I think this tank will perform statistically very well. And the reason for that is it's just got armor. It's just any time you can take a medium and turn it into a heavy, it does incredibly well on most maps. I do think this vehicle will underperform on the maps like Malinovka or Prokhorovka, where other medium tanks have better view range and better camo and play more like light tanks and win that kind of spotting game. And it will probably lose in some situations when you need the firepower to something like a, a Skoda T50, for example. But for maps like this on Berlin, where you really want to have just a big old chunk of protection on your vehicle, boy, does the T55 D, I did it again. The T-54D feel like an absolute brute of the battlefield. And I think unlike the Object 590 that is a bit of a tank that has an identity crisis, while this one definitely blurs the lines between the classes, I think this tank knows what it wants to do. It wants to be an all-purpose heavy medium tank that just pushes forwards but has a gun that is quite formidable at all distances because of the accuracy and has more than enough penetration that you don't want to be on the receiving side of it. I, for one, am not going to enjoy fighting these things in tanks like tier 7 mediums or tier 8 mediums, as unless they make mistakes and they overexpose the side armor, which will allow you to pen here, or if they sit still and allow you to deal with the weak points on top, or you can manage to face hug, although this is a brutal tank to face hug and shoot down on, this thing's going to be an absolute pain in the backside to try and dig out of a position and considering how much firepower it has yeah I think this one's going to perform very well inside the game do I think that it's absolutely crazy overpowered no I mean statistically when I look at this vehicle I think that the Kumpf Panzer 50T is way better than it but for a premium tank that is going to make extra credits and make bonds to boot it's definitely one that would be nice to have inside your garage but is it worth dumping all of your money right now to buy as many boxes as it takes to be able to get your hands on one? 
No, I don't think I would uh, I would recommend to do that. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was my full tank review on the T-54D. Really hope you enjoyed it and it was useful for you. If it was, give the video a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know what you think about the T-54D in the comments down below. Do you think it looks absolutely crazy overpowered? Or do you think that there are enough aspects of the vehicle that look disappointing to kind of like balance that out? Does this look like your dream tank? Does it look like another boring tank that you're not interested in? Let me know. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.